Hello and welcome to another SY Diagnostics video and in today's video we've got a Ford Fiesta 1 litre EcoBoost with the engine management light on. So let's go and see what the fault is and let's get it fixed. You know the score by now guys, so we've got the engine running and sat behind the steering wheel. Uh, engine management light is glowing nice and bright. So let's go get a fault code and let's see what we've got. Let's crack on with it, let's get this job fixed. Okay, so we'll do a quick global scan and straight away I can see we've got a fault code in the engine control module. And the fault code we've got is P0141, O2 sensor heater circuit. Bank 1 sensor 2, um, quite a common fault this, but I thought what I'll do, I'll show you my testing methods, probably see this two to three times a week. Um, so yeah, so let's go do some testing, let's get it fixed. Okay, so we're in the engine bay now, as you can see this is the little three cylinder one litre engine. The multi-plug for the rear oxygen sensor or the catalyst monitor sensor is around the back here so I'm just going to take this intake pipe off disconnect it we'll do a quick resistance test of the heater circuit and then what I'll do I'll erase the fault codes I'll plug in a little test lead that I've made myself which I'll show you and we'll have the engine running and then we'll see um, the ECU command the heater circuit on and the bulb will light up and we'll also see on the live data the command for the um, heater circuit to be switched on. So let me take this intake pipe off and I'll be back with you in a second. Right, so got the multi-plug disconnected for you and I've got my multimeter just connected into uh, pins one and two which is a white wire and the red wire, that's the heater circuit and as you can see, let me just turn the light down, uh, we've got a resistance there of 23.9 kilo ohms obviously far too high we should be looking for around about three to five ohms at ambient air temperature so that's quite a high resistance and the ecu will class that as an open circuit so what i'm going to do next i'm just going to fit my test lead in there to make sure we've still got control from the ecu test the whole circuit correctly uh, testing and not guessing So this is a little lead that I've made up out of the connector of an old sensor and I've just soldered in a side light bulb, a 501 bulb. Uh, similar resistance to what the heater is um, and I'll just plug it in. I'll clear the fault codes. We will induce another fault code for an open circuit on the oxygen sensor but the oxygen sensor heater circuit will still operate all being well. Uh, incidentally, if you was to put this directly into the original sensor with the heater circuit still in place, then you've got far too much resistance and the ECU won't operate the heater circuit. So that's why I just plug this in separately. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna go in and erase the fault code. It's going to ask me to cycle the ignition. which I've just done. So as you can see there, the fault code has been erased. So we'll now go onto some live data. I'm pretty certain that we've got heater circuit. Help if I would spell it correctly. Um, heater control for sensor one and two. So they're showing off at the moment. Let me put engine revs on so you can see that I've got the engine running. Okay, so we've established that the oxygen sensor heater circuit is uh, high resistance. And the next thing we do with the ignition on, on this particular vehicle is check for the 12 volt feed to the sensor. And as you can see on the multimeter there, we've got 12 volt feed at the sensor heater circuit. Uh, obviously very easy to do with my breakout lead, very difficult to do in situ because it's right down there. So 
So let's start the engine up and monitor the control of the heater circuit. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, as you could see from the live data, the heater circuit was switched on straight away. I just turned my light out and it's just starting to glow dim. This will get increasingly brighter as the control gets stronger for the heater element. So I'll just let it run a little bit longer and see if it does light up brighter. So now you can see we've got a bright light. It is flashing. I'm not sure if the flashing shows up on the camera. This is only roughly about a minute from my last section of video. So now we've proven that we've got a control from the engine control unit for the heater circuit and that the heater circuit is classed as open circuit. So we can be confident in replacing the oxygen sensor. So we've got a brand new sensor. It's a genuine Ford item. As you can see, I'm in the uh, connector port there. Just going down the side of the connector pin so as not to cause any damage. We're at ambient temperature, the sensor straight out of the box, and we've got a resistance reading there of 3.6 ohms. So that is your reference value, guys. We've got the vehicle in the air now, and I've taken the under tray off. Obviously, there is the front pipe with the uh, catalytic converter in it, and that is the rear oxygen sensor or the catalyst monitor sensor. So it's quite easy to access. Um, the cable is disconnected and it's just in one little clamp there and a clamp further up. So let's get it off, let's get it replaced. Right, so I've got my um, socket on the oxygen sensor as you can see. These don't usually give much troubles, they're sometimes a little bit tight but they don't tend to take the threads out. So it's going to be difficult to do this one handed I think whilst holding the camera. There we go, I think that's just cracked off. Let's have a quick look. Yep, that's cracked off. <laughs> Bracket's just broken off. I'll get that fixed back on in a second. So let's get the new one in. Obviously sort this bracket out and let's call it a fix. Right, as you can see, I've got the bracket back in now. That just slots back into place. I'm just gonna, the new sensor itself has got a special grease on there. And it did come with a cap on it, a protective cap. So you try not to touch the end, the sensor part. And it's just screwing in lovely by hand. Let me just go nip and get a 22 mil spanner. just nip the sensor up little nip there and all we do then we just put the cable back in the bracket route the connector up across the top into its other connectors and connect it back around the back there so I'm sure you don't need to see that so I'm going to call this a fix Thanks. so it's just a little insight in, into how I test the heater circuit on this particular oxygen sensor system so thanks for watching and until next time, cheers guys.